two videos in two days, it's almost like your boy actually really wants you guys to pass and do well in your exams. Could be the case. Anyway, discriminant. They're going to ask a question on the discriminant. And I've got another worksheet for you here with a bunch of questions all grouped again. So you've got the when they ask for two distinct roots or two distinct points, when they ask for two equal roots, or when a line is tangent to a curve, and when they ask the, 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 if there's no real roots or no solution to an equation. And these all involve um, the discriminant and using the discriminant. And then you've got a few extra ones here which sort of mix and match those three. And in this video I will go through uh, a question from each of these groups. but. Yeah, you've got all those questions there and all of my answers again, which will be in the link in the description. Right. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about what a discriminant is. And basically a discriminant just tells you how many solutions to a quadratic you will have. So if you're given like a quadratic, so something in the form like this here, this ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and you want required to solve it by finding this value here b squared minus 4ac which is the discriminant you can find how many solutions the equation will have so if it's greater than zero it will have two real distinct solutions if it's equal to zero it will have one repeated solution and if it's less than zero it will have no real solutions at all but you should have gone through that in class. And maybe I'll just go through it to make sure you understand. What I'm saying is that if you have an equation like, let's say, x squared, I don't know, plus 2x minus 5, something like that, and let's say we're given the line y equals 2, and I ask you, well, where do these two, where does this line and this curve intercept each other? Well, if we were to look at the graphs here, you know, this would look something like this probably. This is y equals x squared plus 2x minus 5. And then, and this is our x-axis and our y-axis. And then our y equals 2 would be here, right? And if you wanted to figure out where do these two, uh, gra two this curve and this line intercept, well, you just equate them. You'd say, well, well you'd say x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 2. And then you get x squared plus 2x minus uh, 7 equals 0. And then you would solve this equation. And when you solve this, you will get two solutions because it intercepts at two points. But let's say if you change this y and you change it to a negative 10 or something, well, then it would be down here. And then you would get no solutions here. So your b squared minus 4ac would be less than 0. So in the case where it would be minus 10, your discriminant would be less than 0 because it wouldn't, wouldn't ever hit this curve. And then there would be some point as well, and you'll see this in the examples that we go for, where y equals some value, I don't know what it is, some k, in which it, which is, is tangent to the curve. And in that case, your discriminant here, which is this is, you know, a, b, and c, would be equal to 0. So I hope you understand that, and you know, there could there can only be three cases where it's got one repeated root means it intercepts at one point or it's got two distinct roots so it intercepts at two points so there's two solutions or it's got no so y equals negative 10 probably has no because it never intercepts and you'll see three examples of that now okay so let's do some questions so for this first question find the set of values for k for which the line y equals 2x minus k meets the curve y equals x squared plus kx minus 2 where it meets at two distinct points well at two distinct points our discriminant is going to be greater than zero for when we equate these two things together so if we make, so we've got y equals 2x minus k and y equals x squared plus kx minus 2. Well, when we equate these two things together, we get this. So this is solving, seeing how many, um, where they intercept each other, the curve and the line. And 
and this gives us minus kx minus 2x minus 2 plus k equals 0. <coughs> well, this is a plus. So then we get x squared um, plus k minus 2x plus k minus 2 equals 0. Now, this, when the discriminant of this is greater than 0, then these the line intercepts the curve at two distinct points. So where is for what k values is this greater than 0? Well, let's plug it in. You get k minus 2 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c, which is k minus 2. It's greater than 0. And if you expand that out, you get k squared minus 4k plus 4 minus 4k and then plus 8. All right, greater than 0. And we just six, minus 8k plus 12 is greater than 0. Well, we want to know where, for what k values, is k squared minus 8k plus 12 greater than 0. Well, let's just solve this for when it's equal to 0. So we know where it intercepts the y, the x-axis, or the y, uh, yeah, the x-axis when y equals 0. Well, we get, we can say this is k minus 6 and k plus, no, k minus 2 will give us this. So we get two solutions at k equals 6 and k equals 2. So if we look at the graph, and this would be our k squared minus 8k plus 12 here. And this is, you know, this is our k axis. And this would be 2 and 6. Well, where is this k squared minus 8k plus 12? Where is it greater than 0? Well, it's greater than 0 for what k values? For it's here on this part of the graphs. So this is when, so this, so k squared minus 8k plus 12 is greater than 0 when k is, gra is less than 2 and k is greater than 6 or k is greater than 6. So what that means is that when k is less than 2, or k is greater than 6, then this line intercepts this curve at two distinct points. So that we can say the line y equals 2x minus k intercepts the curve y equals, what is it? x squared ma x squared plus kx minus 2 x squared plus kx kx minus 2 the line y equals 2x minus k intercepts the curve y equals x squared plus kx minus 2 when k is less than 2 or k is greater than 6 okay let's do another one the function f is defined so f of x equals, well, I'm just going to write it minus x, x squared plus 6x minus, plus 6x minus 5. Given that the line y equals mx plus c is tangent to this curve, it's tangent to this curve, show that, you know, show this. Well, we know that the line will be tangent to this curve when, when we equate these two, so we get minus x squared plus 6x minus 5 equals mx plus c. So we can take these over, x squared uh, plus mx minus 6x, and then take the 5 over, you get plus c plus 5. All right, you just take all that stuff over like that. That equals 0, and we can just write that um, a bit nicer x plus c plus 5 equals 0. So this line is tangent to this curve when, when for this, because we equated them, when our b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So 
our b is m minus 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times our c plus 5 equals 0. Or we just expand this out, minus uh, 12m plus 36 minus 4c minus 20 equals 0. So then we get m squared e minus 12m 36, so we get minus oh, plus 16 minus 4c equals 0. And what do we want? Well, we want 4c equals this, so we just take the 4c over. And then we showed it. So the line, you know, I'm not going to write it all, the line intercepts the curve Um, the line is sorry the line is tangent which is also another way of saying has one repeated root line is tangent to the curve when 4c equals m squared minus 12 minus 12 m plus 16 Okay, so that's an example of, you know, when your discriminant equals zero. So again, we use the discriminant. And finally, we'll do one for when the discriminant is less than zero. So meaning that our equations will have no solutions. So I thought they use this a lot when they ask for stationary points. So we're given a curve here, y equals x cubed plus px squared plus px and we said find the set of values for p for which the curve has no stationary points okay so state we know that stationary points stationary points occur when our dy by dx equals zero well if the curve has no stationary points then our dy, so the equation dy by dx equals zero, if there's no stationary points, that means there must be no solutions to this equation. So there must be no solutions to this equation, because if there's no solutions to this equation, then there's no stationary points for this curve. So where does that occur? Well, let's find dy by dx first. Well, this equals 3x squared plus 2px plus p. Well, I just differentiated that. And that, the stationary points occur when that equals 0. And this equation here has no solutions when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So our b squared is 2p squared minus 4, 3 is our a, and c is p, which, uh, which is less than zero. So where for what values of p is this less than zero? Well, 4p squared minus 12p is less than zero. Well, let's just solve this. Let's solve 4p squared minus 12p equals zero. We get, um, we can take out a 4p and we can say p minus three equals zero. So we get two solutions here. Let me just get rid of the four divide by 4. So we get two solutions. We get p equals 0 and p equals 3. So if we look at this, we want to know where this is less than 0. Well, if we look, oh, you know, this is going to look something like this, 4p squared minus 12p. And our roots are at 3 and 0. 3 and 0. Well, where is this curve less than 0? Well, this is going to occur here for this part of the curve. So our 4p squared minus 12p is less than 0 when our p is between 3 and 0. So for between 0 and 3, when our p is between 0 and 3, that means that our dy, that this equation here 
has no solutions. And if that equation there has no solutions, that means that this curve has no stationary points. Okay, so that's three really good examples there for you, which I went through. Uh, so you should download the worksheet. There's a bunch more examples uh, there for you, which you can go through and look at my answers before your exam, and it will give you a really good understanding of uh, how they ask this question. They ask this something like this every single year in, uh, in, in every single exam, pretty much. Okay, uh, if, this, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.